Dear ladies and gentlemen, I want to address a warm welcome to all of you. Today is an important milestone in the journey of women on board. Why? Today, European Women on Board is launched with five core members, all of them leading organizations in their respective countries. Women on Board is one of the founding members and proud that we can contribute to set up an international network of networks to invest in further international recognition with priority for countries part of the European Union. Women on Board can host today this prestigious launch because we can leverage on the work accomplished since the start. Women on Board created four years ago by Cecile Kuhn, Emmanuel Atou, Françoise Roules, Marie Evrard and myself is a non-profit organization with the aim of promoting female participation on boards of directors and decision-making bodies in small and large companies, both in public and private sector. Women on Board's first achievement has been to create a unique, ever-growing pool of talented women from diverse professional backgrounds with the necessary competences, skills and experience to become valuable candidates for board positions within Belgian and foreign enterprises. In not even four years' time, the talented pool has outnumbered 160 associate members who have all successfully passed admission procedure. A well-balanced pool by age, board experience and main competences. The mission of Women on Board is not about getting women on board just for the sake of statistics. Despite the considerable efforts many companies have made, progress in most European places remain slow. Women can bring a diversity of perspectives and sensitivity, new ideas and solutions, a culture of innovation, dialogue and participation. It's all about complementarity to achieve results. In a few years' time, women on board gain great recognition and visibility on the Belgian place and even internationally. The access to our pool of board-ready members is free of charge. As a second priority, we take action to make visible this huge supply of skills. Together with our sponsors and partners, we organize services to improve and update the level of best practice. Mentoring program with Guberna, seminars on IFRS and risk management, training on board responsibilities and duties, network events around corporate responsibility topics, and so on. We'd like to thank all our sponsors and partners. Their support is indispensable to the development of the project. And today we bring you here together to get the business world to better know the organization and to meet the members of the pool. So we are together to celebrate results of four years' action, to increase the awareness that women on boards is an undeniable economic interest to come up with efficient decision-making in a fast-changing business environment, to increase international visibility. In this context, Women on Board is proud to be one of the founding members of European Women on Boards, which will be presented in a moment by Marie-Ange Andrieux. But I will first pass the word to Mrs. Joël Miquet, Vice Prime Minister, who was from in the beginning a great support for Women on Board, together with the Institute for Equal Chances to Men and Women. Mrs. Milke, it's a great honor for us that you have accepted to introduce this conference. With that, I will give you the floor. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very happy and honored to be here with you tonight for the launch of the Association European Women on Boards. And I would like to congratulate in particular Women on Board Belgium and especially Cécile Kuhn uh, for being at the basis of this initiative. This launch is an important milestone for the representation of women and decision-making bodies in Europe. This is the reason why I support since its inception Women on Board, which managed to bring together more than 160 profiles of highly qualified women ready to sit on boards of director in just three years. To achieve real equality, there remain large efforts to make. It's a collective effort for all governments and companies at European level, but also at national level. For the Association European Women on Boards, to whom I wish every success possible, 
the adventure is only just beginning. But it's worth it. And in uh, uh, the last century, Stendhal said, the admission of women to perfect equality would be surest mark of civilization. It would double the intellectual forces of mankind and its probability of happiness. And I believe that there is uh, no anyone in this room to contradict him. I would like to thank you. And uh, I would like to congr congratulate women on board of Belgium. I would like to express our gratitude to the Vice, Premier, Vice Prime Minister, Mrs. Joëlle Milke, for her inspiring and encouraging words. In the name of European Women on Boards, which I co-chair, I would like to thank Women on Boards very warmly, and most particularly its chair, Sonia Rotiers, and Vice Chair, Cecil Kuhn, for welcoming and hosting this event to launch the European Women on Boards Network. I would like to associate this presentation about IWAB with Cécile Kuhn, co-chair of IWAB, Turit Solvang and Marita Salo, vice chairs of IWAB, and Roger Barker as the representative of the IOD, which is an IWAB member, since we have all worked from the beginning in a platform of collective cooperation to create IWAB and to design its strategy of development. What are the objectives, the values, and the action plan of IWAB? How are they in line with the EU 2020 objective of a smart, sustainable, and inclusive growth? Our answer is to present to you IWAB triple three strategy, three challenges to be addressed, as a consequence, three IWAB main goals to be achieved and three major work streams in IWAB action plan for how to do it. Why IWAB's creation? IWAB is aiming to address three main challenges strongly underlined by Mrs. Milke. Firstly, a quantitative women on board shortfall. Secondly, a qualitative diversity and effectiveness need. Thirdly, at more macroeconomic level, a competitiveness and sustainability gap, because finally, at the EU macroeconomic level, this under-optimization of human capital, this long-term competitiveness factor, destroys economic value and creates a negative competitiveness, employment, and sustainable growth gap. The HEWAB network is also clearly a project aiming at contributing to facilitate a societal change in progress. At a key moment of our economic history, when Europe needs to imagine a new path to tomorrow's growth. Ladies and gentlemen, for all this, we are neither optimistic nor pessimistic. We are absolutely determined. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Well, thank you all very much for joining us tonight. We, it's our job, really, and our, our great pleasure tonight um, as a panel to try and dig in a little bit to some of the points that were very clearly made, both by Sonia uh, and by Marianne, about the objectives that IWOB is trying to meet. And we thought we could bring some personal views, some anecdotes from a very rich business experience that you see sitting up here before you. I would start by saying it's very important to have uh, more than one or two women on a board, because uh, once you, you have a critical mess, I think you can really drive the, the agenda of the board meeting to bring more the people agenda into these discussions. I still feel it is very much driven around financial KPIs, and I think the people topics will more and more enter. And based on that, I believe the, the, the contribution is really to, to work in teams, to, to, to contribute, to bring disparate aspects, the diversity we have heard about, um, listening, picking up things, and we talked about ethics. I believe there's really a lot about ethics that women can bring to the board. Uh, no, um, the presence of women is changing the ambience, that's mm -hmm. for sure. It's, in uh, what, in uh, what way? 
it's more sensitivity to you indeed human mm -hmm. issues yeah. uh, to um, uh, um, uh, what, uh, things that are not um, uh, necessarily um, um, expressed as a figure yes. uh, mm -hmm. um, and thus the bond uh, uh, collective judgment is better I think I've been very often the first woman on executive committee with a lot of men and what I've experienced almost every time uh, is that the woman will bring much more less ego right that very often you have a territorial uh, attitude from men in in an executive committee saying this is my territory I don't come and touch mine and I will don't come and touch yours women are very often much more there to try to bring the whole of the company to a better end and not only for themselves. What I've seen happen is that, you know, we used to have people that could contribute as individuals and now everything we do is built in a, t a team. And I have found that as a result of that, now we have 40% of our yeah. managers are female because they perform very well in that environment uh -huh. where it's less about what do you do as an individual and more about can the team come together and develop a really innovative product. For sure, I, I completely agree with this uh, less ego-driven management of women Something also I can uh, really um, uh, testify about is their, their need of a long-term vision. Why do we do that? Really stepping back and uh, wanted, wanting to do strategic planning, uh, vision, why do we do that? And this is something that is really um, uh, profitable for the company for sure. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm honored to have been invited to speak here tonight, and may I start with a light-hearted remark. I see a question mark in the title of today's event, Gender Diversity on the Boards of European Enterprises, a means to foster smart, sustainable, and inclusive growth. Question mark. May I begin, Captatio Benevolentiae, ladies and gentlemen, by suggesting that we conclude this evening by removing the question mark. <laughs> I expect there were no question mark hanging over tonight's exchanges. I have to be cautious, because in my European Council, only four out of 28 members are women. But that is the choice of the countries, that's the choice of the citizens in each of the member states. It's not the fault of the President of the European Council. <laughs> Indeed, gender diversity in companies will help foster more economic growth in Europe. And precisely the kind of growth that Europe needs, inclusive growth means among other things, that it benefits our citizens by offering employment. And let me recall the specific employment targets set out in the Europe 2020 strategy, raising to 75% the employment rate of both women, women and men. Right now, our employment rate is of 68.5%. But broken down by gender, it is 75% for men and 62% for women. To reach the target of 75% for all, the barriers that are holding women away from the workplace have to come down. This is precisely what you are trying to achieve with your database of board-ready women, women at the highest level promoting a change in corporate culture inside the boardroom and a change in perception outside the room too, with more role models for women in business. As we slowly emerge from one of the worst financial crises in history, more competent women in decision-making would be good news. It reminds me of what someone said about the Lehman Brothers. It's an old joke. Eh? If it had been a Lehman brothers and sisters, maybe things would have turned out differently. Both from common sense and from experience. Diversity is good for decision making. 
balanced boards make more balanced decisions. And with 60% of university degrees going to women, it would be foolish not to make the most of all that potential. Ladies and gentlemen, as you all know, the European Commission has proposed an EU directive for improving the gender balance on company boards. All member states agree on the principle, yes, it is time we saw my, more diversity and balance in the boardroom. This is the European consensus, and your organization is its professional embodiment. Here I salute our Norwegian friends, and your organization makes a crucial contribution to this process, encouraging Europeans to open the door to motivation and talent and diversity. Europe is learning. An attitude shift is underway. The tide is turning, and we are moving forward together. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, the balanced company boardroom is a symbol and a microcosm. It will stimulate progress and change. You set an example that will inspire other women to make a similar contribution. I wish you fair winds on this very windy day. I wish you fair winds for the journey ahead. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Your speech will continue to inspire us for many more years as we continue to develop our projects for more participation of talented women on the boards of Belgian and European companies. Thank you to all the men in this room. With around 30%, we almost get the quota. <laughs> we give you rendezvous in the future for more achievements of smart women and smart men working together jointly boosting the future of our European enterprises. Thank you very much.